What is up, Dream Media family? This is Zach. Welcome back to another episode. On today's episode, we are gonna be checking out the brand new Denon A1H, which is an all-in-one AVR, meaning it is a processor and an amplifier, an all-in-one unit, and it does 15.4 channel processing. Now, on the other hand, we're gonna be comparing this unit next to its big brother, the Morantz AV10 and the Amp10, which is separate. So you got a processor and separate amplification. And just just a minute, I'm gonna get into the differences. Let's go! Welcome back to your media family. So let's start out with the Denon A1H. This unit is going to do all of the processing and all of the amplification. And in a nutshell, really the biggest differences between these two units is gonna come down to power output. What type of speakers you're running, what type of fidelity you're looking for with your system. So you have 150 watts, two channels driven. So if you're running a 15.4, you uh, probably don't have some big old speakers, right? <laughs> now, on the other hand, we have the AV10 and the Amp10. The Amp10, eight ohms, you're talking about 200 watts per channel times 16. Yeah, guys, you heard me right. This is for the big boys. So, so you have a very entry-level system, but you wanna do a crazy surround sound format and keep the cost down. Say you're in the budget of 20 to $30,000. You want a killer 9.4.6 system, but you're not going with crazy huge speakers. You don't need that power. This is perfect for you. It's an all-in-one solution, and you're still getting the best of the best video pass-through for 8K, DHCP 2.3, but you don't have the juice, you know? You're 150 watts, two channels, eight ohms over here this is for my guys who have like serious THX big bad speakers say you're running like the Focal Utopias this is what you want those passive speakers need some juice to really make them run clean so 200 watts per channel 16 channel output eight ohms and then you have a separate processor here at dream media we like to recommend separates over avrs when doing high-end theater and the reasoning behind that is because separates are an investment because as technology changes on the video side you can replace your processor there's always going to be better video formats there's always going to be better audio formats coming out we're constantly evolving in that category but Quality amplifiers, guys, will last you a lifetime. So that's the downfall to a traditional AVR as your video and your audio is all packed into one box. And there are ways around that. You can utilize the pre-outs on the unit and do separate video formatting. But for the average consumer, what ends up happening with the AVR is it goes in the trash and the next one comes in and replaces it, which is fine if you're only doing a home theater upgrade every 10 years. Now, for my enthusiasts, out there, the guys who do want to keep up and they want the latest and greatest every single time, that's why we have separates. And you're going to get better audio quality out of your separates as well with the XLR outputs into your separate amplifier. Again, we're looking at 200 watts per channel, 16 channels, versus 150 watts maximum, two channels driven with eight ohms. Okay, so next I'm going to go over the differences between the front panels on these two units. Let's get into it. Okay, now let's check out these front panels. So a lot of the features are gonna be the same between the two units. Den and Marantz are actually from the same sister company, Sound United, or Musumo is the new company that owns them. A lot of the time we use the Denon AVR for like a living room system. As an example, let's look at the Denon 3800 model. That's a nine channel AVR. Um, it has both processing and amplification built in. What we'll do is use like a 5.1 for the living room system, which is very common, 5.1 in the living room. And then we'll power up zone two as say the kitchen. So whenever you have your vent hood going and you're cooking, you can turn up those speakers separately from the main zone, the 5.1 system so that you can hear the audio and you don't have to blast out the people that are sitting in the living room. This is really common for my customers that have open concept floor plans, which have become extremely popular. And then like with that 3800, you could also power up the patio speakers. So you could do a 5.1 with a couple zones. Now with this guy here, oh my gosh, you could power up a surround system in a bunch of different zones. Let's look at the front panels. When just checking them out at first glance, they look pretty comparable. You got a nice big display here from Denon, which is great. And you have a more minimal 
minimalistic design from Marantz, giving it a really like classic old school look. And even down here on the amp 10, you got these clean little meters. You got your volume and source select. So source select here on the Denon, input select, source select on the Marantz, volume here, volume here. We got power, power, and our phono port is on the exterior of the AV10. It's because a lot of my hi-fi guys are gonna be using this not only just for home theater, but two-channel listening as well as headphones. It has great audio technology built into it for hi-fi users. So on the Denon, everything's gonna display right here. Whereas this little tiny eyeball glass from Marantz, you, you really can't see anything other than your source and that's about it. <laughs> so they put, this nice little drop down panel here to where you can service the unit. I hate whenever you can't, say you're in a rack working and the display isn't in the same room and you can't see the menu systems, that's super annoying. I love how the AV10 has right here a nice display, just like the Denon, to where I can go in, go to my setup, check my level calibration, my crossovers, all the HDMI settings, CEC, blah, blah, blah. I can go in and dial it in right here without even having to rely on a projector or TV. So when we get into the actual physical buttons on the front panel, we have a lot of the same options available. We have our zone two on and off, our zone two source, our zone three on and off, as well as source for zone three. As you come over here to the AV, same thing on the AV10. We got our zone two on and off and zone three on and off and the sources for both of them. Now, a couple differences. We do have over here just status. And then here we have pure direct, DMAX, status, and dimmer. So more choices available over here. We have our setup microphone for our Odyssey calibration. Make sure you guys run your calibration. <laughs> you would think that that goes without saying, but I can't tell you how many people get these things and don't calibrate it. There's a microphone that comes with both of these units. You just set it on the stand, move it into eight different spots in the room, and it'll pew, magically calibrate the room. It's going, or calibrate the speakers to the room. It's going to assign the appropriate amount of power, all of the speakers, set the crossovers, measure the distance in the line, and make sure that this thing is outputting the best quality audio and doing room correction for the space because not everybody has a perfectly rectangular shaped theater room with acoustic treatments. So run the calibration. Now looking over here on both sections, we do have info, option, back, and setup. Info, option, back, and setup, as well as our cursor buttons for up, down, left, right, and enter. Now, we have over here on the Denon, quick select options. We have the dimmer, of course, which is right here on the AB10, but we have uh, quick select options, and this isn't on the Marantz AB10. CableSat, Blu-ray, Media Player, and Heos Music. Those are just you could press one button and it'll automatically switch it over to that quick select option. And the phono input is down here underneath the panel on the Denon and it's out in the open on the AV10. The Amp10 is pretty simple. It's got this old school meter reader for the DB level, dimmer, meter on or off, and the power on and off. Pretty simple. All right, let's check out the backside. Now, looking at the backside. So over here on our Denon A1H, we have pretty comparable ports. They line right up. We have our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas. Just for a frame of reference, I don't have them screwed in to the back of the A1H, but they would look just like the AV10. We have next to that a coaxial and optical connections for cable sat, media player, TV, audio, and CD. And we have a hardwired network connection. If you guys don't have a hardwired connection, that's okay. That's why they do have the Wi-Fi option enabled. We always recommend hardwiring here at Dream Media if you can. Moving on to the HDMI ports, we have seven HDMI ports and they're all DHCP 2.3 8K ports on both units, right across the top, same on both. Now looking at the monitor ports, we have our monitor one out, which on both units we do have ARC as well as eARC support. eARC is for accepting the video signal from your say smart TV or Apple TV, whatever source you have on your video side, it's gonna transfer that audio back over the HDMI cable in full Dolby Atmos to the receiver so that it outputs the audio properly to your speakers. Next, we have zone two and monitor out ports. So you could technically have three monitors running off of this one AVR on either setup. And then you have a power supply, a USB five volt 1.5 amp input. And then we have our signal ground on 
both units. We have the AM FM antennas. Still don't know why they have these in there, guys, but they're there. AM FM. We have audio in for your phono, left and right. And we have our audio in assignable for high-end CD listening. I'm actually really impressed. It, not only for CDs, but anything in high-end audio. You're gonna use XLR inputs into your AVR or separates. I'm really surprised to see over here on the Denon A1H that they have XLR inputs. That's really impressive. I expected it on the AV10 at this price point, but it's nice to know that they have it built in over here on the AVR as well. We got pre-outs for zone two and zone three, lined right up with the AV10. And then we have our trigger out, as well as remote control in and out. Same thing over here, DC out. We have flasher and amp control. So the only difference is the amp control, which is because it's designed to work with the amp 10. So what you would do is take your trigger cable right out of the amp control into your input down here, right there, boom. And then whenever you turn on your AV10, or better yet, through HDMI CEC, you can turn on your projector or turn on your TV and it's gonna turn on the AV10, it's gonna turn on the amp 10. Everything in series will automatically turn on. It's a beautiful thing. Love that new technology built into the HDMI these days. Because before that, we had to use old school flashers, emitters, and do a universal remote. And things are just getting easier and easier every year, guys. And moving on, we have a remote control in and out on the AV10. We don't have that available on the AVR, the A1H. And then we do have an RS-232 on both units. We have subwoofer one through four, and we actually have unbalanced as well as balanced XLR pre-outs on both units. I'm kind of surprised. Again, it's really nice to see the XLR connections here on the AVR because most all-in-one units don't have that ability. Now, here's where things really change, guys. This is where, you know, you're stepping up in quality, right? We have all of our outputs right here. This is sending the signal out to our speakers. It's powering all of our speakers. And you can power a full 9.4.6 system off of this. It can be done, but a lot of my guys out there, once you get to this level, what you're doing is separate, or at least like I did on the Marantz Cinema 50 video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll drop a link up here. Make sure to check it out. The Marantz Cinema 50, what I did is I took out of my pre-outs right here. You have pre-outs for all of your different outputs, front, left, front, right, center, left, right, heights, all that. I took out of those unbalanced analog outputs to my upgraded audio control amplifiers. And that's because I'm running a full 300 system here from Focal and I wanted to maximize the potential of the speakers. So you could still do that here, but you don't have XLR out, which is going to be the absolute best quality possible. So here we're looking at all of the power coming out. And then on the other hand, with our AV10, this is just sending the signal out to our amplifier, the Amp10, which is then powering up that signal and sending it out through these massive <laughs> speaker turbines terminals here to our speakers. 200 watts per channel, eight ohms, 150 watts, two channels driven, eight ohms. Big difference, guys. On the bottom, we do have some additional ports with the Amp 10, but it doesn't really correlate with what we have over here on the AVR, so it's not relevant. I did make a full video on the Amp 10, though, so go and check that video out. All right, guys, well, that does conclude my quick comparison and side-by-side -side view of the brand new Denon A1H and the brand new AV10 and Amp10 from Marantz. These are beautiful units, and honestly, you can't go wrong with either. It just depends on your situation. These things are really complex, guys, and there's a lot of options available. So make sure to reach out and speak with our specialists to find the proper unit for you. We don't only sell amplifiers and processors. We sell everything you need to complete your home theater, from the cables to the projectors, the screens, the TVs, cabinetry, everything you need to complete your dream home theater. We have have you covered here at Dream Media. And we have a preferred installer network in 28 different states if you don't want to put it in yourself. All right, well, that's all I got for you. If you guys like this video, give me a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.